Hi everyone, in this video we are going to practice deriving covalent formulas. So we're going to try to figure out how, what do we actually write down on paper when someone comes up and tells us, hey, you have two nitrogens and one oxygen. And so that's what we're just going to try to work on here. Very, very simple. This will be a very short video. So please derive the chemical formula, specifically covalent formula, that you would have if you were to bring two nitrogens together with four oxygens. Go. All right, did you get an answer? The first thing you have to do is identify what each of of these words actually means or what is their element symbol that is associated with them. So for nitrogen we just use a capital N and for oxygen we just use a capital O. So if we have two nitrogens you do a two for the subscript and if you have four oxygens you do four for the subscript. Now we're adding these two together so you literally just bring them together so you end up with N2O4. Two nitrogens, four oxygens. Pretty straightforward. Let's try another one. One sulfur, two oxygens. Go. All right, so same thing as before. You identify the word and the elemental symbol. So sulfur is just a capital S. Oxygen is just a capital O. We have one sulfur, so you could write S1. That is very, very uncommon. In fact, it's just unconventional, and we don't usually do that. So if you have one sulfur, we just kind of assume you know that, and so we just leave the subscript off. Now for oxygen, it says we have two oxygens, so this needs to become O2. Now again, we add them together, so we end up with SO2 or sulfur dioxide. All right, so let's try one more like that. Um, this one I need you to think about just a hair more than you probably would. And so just, just think about it, just write your answer and then take a second and think about it before you submit it, go. All right, did you get an answer? Same thing as before, figure out what the elemental symbol is. So oxygen's usually just an O, carbon's just a capital C. Now we have one oxygen, one carbon. Like we said in the previous example, we don't write those ones, so we're just gonna leave that blank. And so here we end up with one oxygen, one carbon. Now, if we added them together like we've been doing with our previous one, we end up with OC, so the Orange County. We've magically moved to California. Obviously we haven't. This is not correct. Now, how could you possibly know that? Well, you really couldn't, to be honest, but now now that I've told you that we never write OC, I would expect for you to know that it's actually CO, carbon monoxide. Now, there's really no rules with this except for the fact that carbon and hydrogen tend to come first. So we usually write those on the leftmost side and then we fill everything else over here. So your oxygens, your nitrogen, your sulfur, your chlorine, anything, so on and so forth. Those are usually on your right side. Again, you're not really expected to know that, but now that I've told you that it's carbon monoxide, I do expect you to know it's CO, not OC. All right, now I have one more for you, and this is just standard convention here. So what I'm trying to get you to do is look at all five of these and figure out how do the following elements exist naturally, okay? So how do they exist naturally? Is nitrogen a gas? Is nitrogen a solid? Does it exist just by one nitrogen? Does it exist with five nitrogens? How do these things exist naturally? So I'm looking for a phase and a formula. Go. All right, did you get an answer? This might have been a little bit more challenging based on what you've, your previous education or your previous knowledge. Um, so we're gonna go through this together. The first thing that you would do is you'd look at a periodic table and look at the colors. So if something is red on a periodic table, it's telling you that it's a gas in its natural state. If something is blue, it's telling you that it's a liquid in its natural state. And if something is black, it's telling you that it is a solid in its natural state. And so what I did here is I went through and pretty much picked a bunch of boring ones. So nitrogen, that's definitely red, that's a gas. Krypton, also red, that's a gas. Phosphorus is black, so that exists as a solid. Hydrogen, red, that's a gas. Helium, red, that's a gas. Okay, so that's nothing fancy. You can do that as long as you know the rules. The hard part is actually determining what the formula is. And so this is where I was asking you to try to identify which one of these are considered diatomic atoms, so diatomic molecules, things that exist naturally in twos or in pairs. And nitrogen is definitely one of those, and so is hydrogen. And so what we have here is instead of just nitrogen gas, you would actually write and two gas because there's two nitrogens. It always exists like that. Now, I don't expect you to know the triple bond part yet, but there's always, it always comes in two. Krypton is not a diatomic. It exists naturally by itself, so you would write krypton gas. Phosphorus, also not a diatomic. It exists naturally by itself, so phosphorus solid. Hydrogen is a diatomic, so it's H2, and then it exists as a gas. Helium is not a diatomic, so it exists just by itself, helium gas by itself, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, stop. Go through this very slowly. Try to get a hang of it and just drill, drill, drill. Do as many problems as you possibly can until you feel ready to move on to the next video. Good luck. Take care of yourself. Drink water.